is 10.15 at night, and I'm too lazy to try to do better lighting. <laughs> Muse. Can you see that? Boop. There we go. That's better. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I know. It would be better if I turned here. Okay. I looked up the, how to say these words and don't... Anyways. The lady in this book is Solange. And I, I went to the pronunciation to try to get this correct. And I'm still not going to get it correct. Anyway, she's driving me crazy because she is in love with the poet Francesco Petrarch. Petrarch. Yes, I looked up that too. And he is, he was a real person. And I listened to the pronunciation of his name. Petrarch is the best I'm going to get. He lived July 20th, 1304 to July 19th, 1374. And his history is on Wikipedia if you want to check that out. Solange is the woman who loves him. <laughs> Even though he ruins her career. And no, I don't want to give too much away. But she has a son and he takes him away. And... He, he loves another woman. They get together. Francesco and Solange get together. And shortly afterwards, he's like in love with this married woman and just uh, lovesick over her all the time. Ah. Anyways, it's in the 14th century. So it's a historical. It's in France. It's about betrayal. She's a strong woman. She's a scribe. And she does have prophecies. Now, it starts off with one of her prophecies. And then the nuns take her in to raise her when she becomes an orphan. And they feel that she's going to see prophecies for them. And then they're always telling her, tell us your prophecies. Tell us your prophecies. You know, they want to know. That's why they have her there. And they took her in. And then she'll have a, a vision and she doesn't tell them. When she lays her hand on somebody who's pregnant, whether it's an animal or a person, she can tell things about the baby. Besides that, she doesn't have any control over her visions. They just they just come along, certain things trigger them, and then she starts speaking in different languages and different tongues, and she's she's gone. She doesn't even know what she's saying, and she can't stand up afterwards, and she usually blacks out. So she doesn't have any control of them. She does have dreams and such, and then even though they have her there with the nuns, because of these things, and she doesn't even tell them when she does have a vision or a dream, a dream anyways, usually the visions, if she's around anybody when she has visions, obviously they know because she starts speaking all these different languages and, and uh, saying things. So in this book, she's accused of being a harlot and... Well, she's not, and she's almost killed for being a harlot. She's accused of being a witch. Well, if you knew anything about herbs and healing back then, you were thought to be a witch anyways. But, of course, if she had the visions, she's going to be accused of being a witch. And she is also renowned as a saint. So she has quite life going on. She has to leave the nuns. So the first part why she's with the nuns, well, she's with her mom. And then, you know, the mom dies at the beginning and she goes with the nuns. But then when she leaves there, then the story picks up more. She's in Avignon. Av Avignon. 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 I think it said. So uh, anyways, it was interesting to look up this Francisco Petrarch and read about his uh, life story and who he really was. I am not done the book yet. Oh, let's see. Can you see my little tab there? A little bit more than halfway through, I guess. It's pretty good, but it's driving me nuts. This guy, Francisco, she just, just, you know, I think she could make it on her own, though she has her son to think about now. And trying to get him back. But I think she should have got away from Francisco a long time ago. 
and maybe even went to another city if she could have and started over as a scribe because she was doing well as a scribe and she could do that and look after herself if she would have got away from him. But anyways, I will continue to read it and I will be back. <laughs> 